Hello, and welcome to the Songwriters Workshop. This is the series where I attempt to write songs based on the process and techniques of famous songwriters. Each video looks at a different songwriter's writing habits, musical inspirations, and creative process, while also including an original song written using those techniques. So let's take a look at our next songwriter. In this video, we will be looking at Wilco frontman and songwriter Jeff Tweedy. Jeff grew up in southwestern Illinois and was exposed to a wide variety of music through his family and friends growing up, including the likes of Glen Campbell, The Beatles, Harry Chapin, and Frank Zappa, while also having a love of punk rock bands like Blondie, The Clash, and The Ramones. As a teenager, he befriended fellow guitarist and songwriter Jay Farrar, and together they would go on to create the band Uncle Tupelo with drummer Mike Heidorn, releasing four studio albums between 1990 and 1994 before splitting up after finishing their tour later that year. After the band dissolved, Jay and Mike would go on to form the band Sun Vault, while Jeff would form the band Wilco with former Uncle Tupelo members John Stirrott, Max Johnston, and Ken Coomer. Although Jeff and John would be the only consistent members of the band as their lineup changed through the early years of Wilco, members included Jay Bennett between 1995 and 2002 for the recording of their early albums like Summer Teeth and Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. With Wilco, Jeff would release 11 studio albums, including the 2004 album A Ghost Is Born, which would win the Grammy Award for Best Alternative Music Album. Beyond Wilco, Jeff has also released four solo albums, one album with his son Spencer under the band name Tweedy, and produced for legendary singer Mavis Staples. And of course, he will never be forgotten in the town of Pawnee as the lead singer for Land Ho. And although I'm not holding my breath for them to get back together anytime soon, maybe he'll do something with Mouse Rat or Johnny Karate. Chop, chop, kick, kick, chop harmonies, oh my god! Jeff has also written two books, which will serve as the sources for this video. The main book I will be using to write my song will be Jeff's book on songwriting, How to Write One Song. In the book, Jeff lays out his songwriting philosophy and offers helpful writing exercises to get started on a song. The other book is Jeff's memoir, Let's Go So We Can Get Back, where we get a look at Jeff's experiences with Uncle Tupelo, Wilco, and his life in music. In it, Jeff says something I would like to become the mantra for this channel going forward. He says, Really the thing that pushed me to start writing songs is the same thing that compels me to keep writing songs today. I listen to music, new records, old favorites, the radio, anything, until I feel like I can't take it anymore. I have to make something or I'll lose my mind. I think that may be the highest purpose of any work of art, to inspire someone else to save themselves through art. Creating creates creators. It is because I love the music of these artists that I decided to start doing these videos and writing these songs. Their creations spark my creations. And I hope the words of wisdom from Jeff or any of the other songwriters I talk about inspire others to start creating as well. So let's get started. I started the writing process for my song with some of the exercises I found in how to write in one song. I didn't have an idea yet for my song, so I was hoping by doing these exercises something would spark my inspiration. As Jeff says in the book, inspiration is rarely the first step. Most of the time, inspiration has to be invited. I started with a word ladder. Jeff says to come up with 10 verbs that are associated with, say, a physician, and write them down on a page. Then write down 10 nouns that are within your field of vision. Now take a pencil and draw lines to connect nouns and verbs that don't normally work together. Then you try to write a poem using the combination of verbs and nouns. From this exercise, I got a few good lines that I liked, and it offered some interesting images, but I felt like I needed more to get started. So I decided to do another version of the word ladder that Jeff talks about in Let's Go. In this version, he says, you could take, say, all the verbs from an Emily Dickinson poem and set them side by side with all the nouns from the Battle Hymn of the Republic and see what happens. It might start as gibberish, but it's amazing how hard it is to put words next to each other without some meaning being generated. 
So I took all the verbs and nouns from a couple of my favorite poems. In this case, the verbs from Sylvia Plath's Mirror and the nouns from Dr. John Cooper Clark's Gimmicks, and started to see what happened. Of all the exercises I tried, I think this was my favorite. It gave me some of the most interesting lines that I ended up using in my song. Though I had some good individual lines, I still didn't feel like I had a direction for my song. So I tried one more exercise, this time what Jeff calls stealing words from books. He says, you open up a book anywhere, any page, and keep humming a melody to yourself as you scan. Highlight those words and keep moving until you've collected a cache of words that potentially sound right in the context of your melody. He goes on to say, you might write down your anchor word, whatever it is, and maybe find a rhyming word. Before you know it, a story might start to emerge that has nothing to do with the source text. And this is exactly what happened to me. I started skimming through John Ronson's book, Lost at Sea, and I was drawn to the unique image, Apollo G, which in the context of the book is a license plate, but it would become the core of my song down the road. But before we get into more lyrics, let's talk about Jeff's recommendations for music writing. Jeff gives some great thoughts on how to write music by being open to the influence of the music you love and not to be afraid of just writing. The first recommendation of Jeff's that I took was to learn other people's songs. He says, everyone I've ever met who has impressed me as a musician or a songwriter has also taught me about someone else's music besides their own. The idea that if you want to learn how to do something, watch someone else do it and watch them well. Since I was researching Jeff, I decided to learn a couple of my favorite Wilco songs. I tried to listen to what in their songs made me connect to them. And then with that idea in mind, I started writing my own music. And this leads me to another of Jeff's recommendations, to steal. Well, not steal literally, but as he puts it, I don't think you should be afraid to use the direct influence of someone else's work, even though we've been taught that it's wrong to take something without permission. He goes on to explain that, when I come across chord pairings and passages of chords that are surprising or new to me, I often play them into my phone without the vocal melody, or with a new vocal melody added to obscure the source. Then later, when I come across these musical ideas in my voice memos, if I am still able to recall the song that is being referenced, I'll discard it as a potential building block for my own song. Or I'll spend more time figuring out some way to make the chordal transitions that intrigued me more my own. So I did the same. And some of my song's chord progression actually ended up being based on the progression in the Wilco song, Jesus, etc., but with my own melody and enough chordal differences to make it significantly different. Or at least I hope it sounds different enough. Please don't sue me, Jeff. After playing around with Jeff's music writing recommendations, I had a stockpile of musical ideas to go along with my lyrical ideas from my previous session. And after sitting down and looking at what I had created in just two sessions, I was amazed by how much I was able to write. I think it has to do with the fact that I was trying not to judge myself while I was writing. As Jeff says, basically, you have to learn how to have a party and not invite any part of your psyche that feels a need to judge what you make as a reflection of you. Or more accurately, the part of you that cannot tolerate any outward expression that might be flawed. Back to the words. To start off this writing session, I used another of Jeff's writing exercises and started playing with rhymes. He says, one thing that I like to do is writing freestanding couplets. Freestanding meaning that they are unattached to any poem or song. So, using my rhyming dictionary, I started writing some couplets. I tried to find interesting or uncommon pairings to try and invoke some unique images. A lot of them I wouldn't end up using in my finished song, maybe they'll inspire another one down the road. I felt like I now had a good bank of musical and lyrical ideas, so I started putting them together. Jeff instructs to basically start by finding one of the melodies or chord progressions you've collected that you feel drawn to finish, and then scan through your lyrical ideas for something that fits rhythmically and emotionally. As I said, I decided to base my song around the image Apollo G that I stole from Ronson's book. However, I discarded the original premise and decided to use it as an ironic name of a rocket ship 
built by one of these billionaires that have been in the news recently. To my mind, it seemed disingenuous to spend such a vast amount of money to escape a planet that their practices are harming, rather than use that money to help it. To this end, I decided to write from the point of view of one of these billionaires, a technique that Jeff brings up in How to Write One Song. He says, be someone else. I'm just saying it's worthwhile and helpful to consciously step outside yourself from time to time and write from some other point of view. So, using or modifying my lines from my writing exercises to fit my theme, I began to put the lyrics over the chord progression and melody I thought worked well with them. Pretty soon, I had a first draft for my song. While I was happy with most of what I had written, I still felt like I needed one more lyrical push. So I did another word ladder, this time using adjectives instead of verbs, another variation that Jeff talks about in How to Write One Song. However, Jeff says to be wary about using adjectives, saying, don't let adjectives make you think you're being poetic. The problem is when they're used to spice up a vague verb or noun, instead of replacing that with precise language. So, I tried to focus on using unique pairings of adjectives and nouns in order to come up with interesting lines. I only ended up using a few of the lines in my finished song, but it gave me what I needed to complete it. Using Jeff's writing exercises really helped give me unique and interesting lyrics that I probably wouldn't have come up with without them. So far in my writing, I've struggled with writing lyrics that felt poetic, and these exercises really helped put me in a place where I felt like I could start to do that. And ultimately, Jeff's techniques just helped me write more. For a long time, I felt discouraged from writing because I felt like what I wrote didn't live up to the music that I loved. But as Jeff says, I assumed that the people who are great at writing songs were just more talented than everybody else. I've concluded that this is rarely the case. The people who seem the most like geniuses are not geniuses. They're just more comfortable with failing. They try more and they try harder than other people. And so they stumble onto more songs. So, here is the demo of the song I stumbled onto with Jeff's help. I hope you enjoy it.
So that was the song. And I think it may be the one I'm happiest with so far in this process of learning how to write songs. Jeff's writing exercises really helped me open up to what I felt like was more interesting language and possibilities with songwriting. And I was only able to scratch the surface of all the amazing advice found in How to Write One Song and Let's Go So We Can Get Back. There are more writing exercises and insight into Jeff's process in the books. So if you want to learn more, I would highly recommend getting a copy. And thank you for watching this video and listening to this song. Please let me know what you thought about it in the comments. As Jeff says, all songs rely on collaboration with a listener. Someone other than you has to put the song and its meaning together in their consciousness for it to have any meaning outside of yourself. Thanks again for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you at the next song.